I would absolutely any day tell people to go and play Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2, in my opinion, still does the best job of delivering story when it comes to MMORPGs. The world feels extremely alive. You have people fighting. This MMO is definitely worth the money. Guild Wars 2. 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 Oh, really? We'll see about that. Guild Wars 2, a game I've never touched before despite it being 11 years old. And not touching 11 year olds is really strange behavior for a YouTuber in 2023. <laughs> now, once upon a time I did play a dervish in a completely unrelated game with certainly no lore or story significance to this one called Guild Wars. But that was way back when we could call a hurricane Katrina and no one wanted to have sex with it. Ah, 2005. The good old days. But we're not here to reminisce over an age when the timeline wasn't irreversibly shattered by turning a gorilla into Swiss cheese, all because a child wanted free water skiing lessons. See, I'm here to entertain you, and you're here to get the Wish.com version of brain damage. And maybe if we're both lucky, I'll be able to offer to you an opposing viewpoint to all those boomers who keep sucking themselves off over how good Guild Wars 2 is. So let's waste no more words and see how disappointing Guild Wars 2 is about to be. Let's start off simple and pick that one objectively superior character race. And we might as well pick our class or profession too while we're at it. Right off the bat, Guild Wars 2 gets pretentious on us. Ooh, I'm so fancy because I've got an animal race that doesn't look like each and every other furry race out there. I get the impression that when first creating the char in Guild Wars 1, someone on the design team one day looked over at their house cat and realized that it doesn't in fact have a gigantic pair of unwieldy bolt-on tits, thus dooming the Guild Wars 2 team to keep the design for the sake of continuity and banishing the furry menace back into other unnamed games out there. And yeah, that's great, but so what? I can name two, two other MMOs out there that don't have furries in them, I think. I mean, just look at this game. It's already acting like it's better than everyone else out there. Next, you're gonna tell me that the people who play this game shower regularly. Look, let's get down to brass tacks. I'm here to have a bad time and dunk on all those Guild Wars 2 simps, okay? Not many, but the most hardcore of MMO players will realize this. But there's a delicate balance of salted misery to be maintained within this genre. And if we're gonna figure out how to be miserable, there's only really one place to start this journey. Reddit. And within this cesspool of circle jerking mod incels, we got no help. Big surprise. But I did stumble across this useful little link right here. And a little later, upon returning to my post, we found a surprising number of people with a brain who typed something worth reading. These posts right here have me pretty concerned, actually. You see, they may not look like much, but this kind of positive behavior is disruptive to the natural ecosystem of MMO related Reddit. But moving on to that link I found, we've got two choices here. We can pick our character through player choice or by player time. Playtime probably means that people are having a worse experience with the game than just not liking the way something looks. So let's go with that. So now in no uncertain terms, we know we'll be playing the cat wizard that escaped the Harry Potter race war. So on to the character creator. Hmm, let's see. Mesmer, illusions, finesse, misdirection. All the appropriate skills to craft the perfect YouTube apology after entering a Japanese forest. While we design Simba's disabled little brother, you may notice some real chunky polygons sticking out here and there. But a fair portion of this is covered up decently by the amount of options and sliders we've got available. And on top of those sliders, we've got some presets. We can even change the background lighting in case God didn't like you having a working pair of eyes. And there's even a slider so we can decide if we're going to be short or recognized as a person by society at large. All of this is shockingly well put together, but this isn't gameplay, so let's speed run this a bit. All right, there we go. Completely indistinguishable from your average char. Now then, let's get in game. What? Law? Backstory? What the fuck is all this? Hold on. Now this is pure speculation on my part, but I get the feeling they're trying to turn our character into a person. I thought I was supposed to be playing main character generic hero man number six billion and one. All right, fine. I'll admit. The character creator is good enough that it's got me wondering why this isn't industry standard for every other MMO out there. God, and this game is 11 years old and we still haven't evolved? You know what, don't worry about it. I'm sure with my choice of the least played race profession combo that we're about to have a bad time in the starting area. So welcome to Smokestead. Turns out that the Cat Chimera people beat the snot out of the previous owners of this land so bad that they all became eternally butt mad blue check mark Twitter ghosts. Jesus, and this is the least played starting area.
Now, before we continue with our journey, I feel it's important for me to give you some backstory of this game before things get confusing. The premise of Guild Wars 2 is that we're playing as a cat monkey man in a game developed by the Children of Satan, who in unison with a group of money-hungry lizard men published this game, proving that sometimes math isn't bullshit and two negatives can sometimes produce something positive. This game is all about adventuring your way through a single-player game with other people that bother you every now and then. In the world of Tyra Banks, who's got a pretty severe collection of bad dragons laying around. Strange occurrences happen in this MMO that don't happen in others. Like your backstory choices having mild consequences as opposed to none at all, and your character developing somewhat of a personality. In the long run of the Guild Wars 2 story, we're here to inflict unwanted diversity upon the world like our name is Netflix, and transport some uppity gecko with a bad habit of organizing a domestic terrorism or two into the afterlife. And I'm gonna stop there because this is a first impression and that's just the base game. And if you want the rest of the story, you might as well I'll go get a PhD in quantum theoretical fucking physics because that would be far more straightforward than understanding anything beyond each expansion featuring some version of Big Lizard Mad now. Except for Living World 3, where one of the human gods becomes the living embodiment of China and decides that everything is edible through his personalized Slopey straw. But none of that really matters right now because I'm a giant bipedal cat magician surrounded by unarmed but suspiciously blue protesters in need of some excessive force. So after proving to our superiors that no no one is above the law except us. We even get some ringside seats to desecrating the graves of the indigenous. In particular, one of their leaders who really wanted to be a Power Ranger before he died and revived himself into an oversized Funko Pop. Now looking at this world lore-wise, everything tends to fit together very neatly. We've been told from the start that the Char are brutal and warlike, and we, as a character in this game, get to be a part of that tradition. There's only really one problem. I, as a player in this game, don't really take any of these schizophrenic apparitions seriously at all. I mean, look at this. This guy's been beating me up for the last half an hour, and my health bar's barely moved. At no point in this game so far am I in any serious danger, and I'm not really being forced to learn how vital any of my specific abilities are. But moving on, after defeating the last statue of Stalin in an admittedly epic battle, we are ready to leave Tutorial Warzone into Tutorial Starting Area, which is the same place just with less ghosts and not instanced. So welcome to Smokestead. The transition here is a little bit odd. We've now gone from battle-hardened soldier to pest control handyman who's here to autocorrect a few sentient rats out of existence and learn a little bit more about the world around us. And look, as much as I want to be negative about Guild Wars 2, I can't say I hate this experience. We get a few more abilities, learn some important skills like how to dodge, and learn to develop a case of epilepsy from all the spell effects happening around us. Come to think of it, that's one of the problems with this game. You see, combat is interesting, more on that in a second, but there's just so much visual clutter that it's difficult to Oh my god, the abilities change when you switch weapons. And not just that, every profession wields the same weapon in a completely different way, which just adds to the fantasy of the game. Someone with the Guardian profession will pick up a two-handed sword and identify it as a manually operated wood chipper. But a Mesmo will pick up the same sword and instead see a long metal wand made for ranged combat. A Varakadav can't believe that shit worked. Now, I've never in my life thought of a sword as a ranged weapon, but Guild Wars 2 made that possible, and I can appreciate that. As I played my way through the starting area, though, certain unavoidable realities about the combat began to dawn on me. As I've hinted at, magic effects in this game are so bright I feel like I'm staring into the fucking sun sometimes. But that's about the worst I have to say about it. Guild Wars 2 has somehow made a hybrid tab targeting system that feels immersive and smooth to play, even in 2023. Part of this likely has to do with the fact that if I've put position myself wrong and use an ability. My character doesn't tell me, can't do that. but instead it's more of a sure. I don't mind flailing the sword around in the Walmart parking lot, but it's also more than that. Almost every single combat factor feels important. Your timing, your positioning, how you choose to approach a fight depending on your profession, all of it matters, except what ability you decide to press, at least at the lower levels. Now I'm sure at endgame that statement is likely to not hold true, but right here, right now. It honestly doesn't feel like it matters what button I press because my character is a walking god of death. Everything I touch just dies. 
And for someone who's never played MMOs before and picked up Guild Wars 2, that's the thing that's likely to take them out of the experience the most. There's no initial challenge, but other than that, there's plenty of weapons to experiment with, a not overwhelming amount of buttons to push, and all of what you're doing feels well tied to the fantasy of Tony the Tiger's albino brother looking for his lost dad. While we go through all these little quests that build up the world a little bit, we finally come of age at level 10 and are given permission to leave the opium fields to pursue our own personal jihad. We enter into a city that gives off first person Kenshi vibes. More importantly, we're given our first mount. Huh. Now that was underwhelming. No quest line, no story integration. Just congrats on level 10. Here's a fucking dinosaur. Now I don't know about you, but back in my day, playing WoW, when everyone thought that you could fix the paladin nuke sword by fishing, when you got your first mount, it felt amazing. You had to grind for hours to make enough money to afford that bastard, because it's likely you wasted all your money on repair bills from exploration related debts or doing something else stupid in game. And you had to walk to your computer desk uphill barefoot in the snow while it was raining fire all while your dad chased after you with a belt. But here in Guild Wars 2, it's just kind of... Eh. And then that all changed when I pressed the W key. I'm about to go. I take back what I said. This iguana feels pretty good. This mount doesn't just have one singular speed, it accelerates from a stationary position. It has a turn radius, it even has abilities. And as much as WoW bit off of Guild Wars 2 for the Dragonflight mount system, it still feels like they've done a better job in the original and we're still currently only level 10. God. Damn it, Guild Wars 2. Why can't you just let me hate you like an MMO player normally hates everything they play? Haven't you taken enough from me? All right, fine. I'll admit that the hybrid tab targeting system feels good and immersive to play with. I'll begrudgingly accept that this little ability bar isn't overcomplicated or oversimplified, all while it keeps the character's class abilities in line with the in-game lore. But do they really have to make things straightforward enough that some new player who's never played an MMO before can stumble into this game and enjoy themselves? Themselves, and that they could probably do this without looking up a single guide online. Won't you consider the suffering this causes a veteran player like me? How am I, as a salty old player, supposed to gatekeep this experience when even the A and D keys are bound to strafing instead of keyboard turning by default? How am I supposed? Oh, thank God, something to bitch about. There's an in-game store. This game is pay to win. Absolutely disgusting. I have never in my life seen a cash shop so, so mediocre. God damn it, who am I kidding? There's much worse out there. Keep in mind, this doesn't make this acceptable in my opinion, but it could be much worse. The biggest thing to complain about here is probably the utility and upgrade tabs. From what I can tell, the utility and upgrade tabs are all about creating a problem to sell a solution with the old pay for convenience line attached to it. You know how it goes. Extra bag space, bank tab, crafting shortcuts, that kind of stuff. Now, all of that stuff I expected, but then it takes a little bit of a darker turn. Extra character slots, waypoint unlocks, the fact that gold doesn't just convert convert to gems, but gems also convert to gold, that is pretty low. But again, admittedly, it's surprising it's not worse considering the developer and publisher of this game. But at least there's a solution to this as a first time player. You see, I don't care about being the best, most well kitted out Guild Wars 2 player. I don't care about high performance. I'm just here for an experience. So with this one magic spell, we can get rid of all these problems. Now let's get back to our adventure. So after dicking about in the Mad Max Thunderdome for a while, things at this point become just a little bit formulaic. We do our quests, we level up, we get thrown into some story based instant stuff. We're just kind of muddling around and what, what the hell is that? Hold on one sec. Oh, so it's like a point of interest discovery map thingy. Anyway, as I was saying, we're kind of just... What the hell is that? One second, I'm not missing this. Whew. Well, that was fun. 
Now, what was I saying? At this point, I can't even remember. And that seems to be the thing with Guild Wars 2. There's a ton of content, world events, jumping puzzles with rewards, open-ended quests with a lot more to experience, even at these lower levels. Getting sidetracked feels almost mandatory as you level up. Guild Wars 2 has somehow struck a good balance between the story-based quests and helping us explore the world through side quests and whatever else we want to do. And that's one of the hidden hallmarks of a great MMO. You're just not able to help yourself and you need to know what that thing you saw was in the distance. Or the game giving you every opportunity to be involved in some dynamic world event. Now combine that with Guild Wars 2's fever dream-like graphics and it's like being the world's worst ADHD patient on peyote. By the time I had regained my grip on my focus, I was level 20, looking for a dad I once lost in an orphanage-shaped daycare all those years ago. After finding him, I realized why he may have abandoned us. Look, I'm no expert in genetics, but we're a little bit uh, on the light side for that to be our dad. But either way, he decides to accept us as his real son under the condition that we free him from prison and get revenge on his old gang for him. So that's exactly what we do. What's notable about this quest line though is that the game gave us the option to keep him in prison. What's impressive here is that the MSQ is based all on the one backstory I chose way back in the character creator. Eventually though, we pay our father's bail, find the feral cats that he had been hanging out with and sterilize them away from life, resolve the story for now and are back to adventuring out in the open world. Now I had come into this game without reading a single guide or watching a single video. The only thing I had done was make a post on Reddit and that convinced me that interacting with people was a bad idea. But through witnessing my sheer unbridled stupidity, I had someone who's been playing this game since the birth of our current universe expose me to both the likely origin of the no-no flu that gets you shadow banned for mentioning it and eventually the first dungeon I had been looking for. Now this has been a long trip but not an unenjoyable one. I wish I could have stuck to my original goal and been a salty little baby about this game. Maybe make a spicy thumbnail for this video, rake in those clickbaited rage views saying this game is terrible, but I just, I can't do it. Guild Wars 2 is not without its problems, but it is still an incredible MMO. It took me by surprise how well loved this game is by its players and community at large. This entire MMORPG can be summarized in the words, they didn't have to, but they did. The devs didn't have to make mounts with accelerations instead of flat speeds, but they did. They didn't have to voice act out the main character storyline with what must have been a shit ton of lines for some voice actors, but they did. They didn't have to put in all this extra effort into making the combat system world story quests or scenery and could have just gone with your stock standard MMO approach and ended up with a perfectly fine MMO. But they did. And that's what makes Guild Wars 2 feel so special. Now this might be crazy to say, it almost feels like this game was made by people who not just like, but maybe even love the MMO genre. But maybe that's just early onset schizophrenia from being flashbanged by the Mesmer's abilities one too many times. If somehow like me, you still haven't played Guild Wars 2 at this point and just want a bullet point list of the good versus the bad, then here it is. Starting with the bad. Guild Wars 2 throws a lot of complex systems at you, which can be overwhelming at times. There's a lot of complexity in this game and it's easy to miss something important, like the fact that you can upgrade your gear or that you have to equip your specialization to your character before you can gain its benefit. This feeling of being overwhelmed also carries over to the way things look. And sometimes there's a lot of visual clutter to deal with. Some abilities are blinding or distracting to the point that you're not quite sure if you've missed something important or not. There's a pay to win shop. And no, on this channel, we don't pussy out and use weasel words like pay for convenience. It's all the same thing. And at the end of the day, it's there to get you to spend more money. None of that really matters as you're leveling up your character, but that's something to keep in mind if you plan to stick with this game all the way to max level. And finally, there are some bugs, strange error messages and issues with the game, but nothing so far that it's been game breaking or made me have an uninstall moment. Moving on to the good, and there's a lot of good, so I'm just going to stick to the main points. Guild Wars 2 base game is free to play, making it far more enjoyable knowing I could stop at any point in time and my anorexic bank account isn't going to get any thinner. There are no negative pressures here compelling me to play the game if I don't want to. This is also a very detailed game with a lot of love and time put into it and that becomes very obvious the more you play it. Everything from the story to the world design itself feels on point. Nothing about this experience is mismatched. Combat is simple to learn but has a high skill ceiling depending 
depending on what character class you pick up. But more than that, the higher your level goes, the more the flow of combat feels impactful. Initially, I told you that at the lower levels, it doesn't really matter what buttons you push. But as you level up, the world around you begins to become a threat, much like aging in real life. And if you're not paying attention to your health bar, you'll find yourself squirming around on the floor, trying to bandage yourself up before you get Bull Cosby'd. And even at low levels, I can tell that the law of this game appears to be coherent, consistent, and integrated into the gameplay itself. This is the kind of MMO story that makes you care about what you're doing. You're not just running out into the wilderness, killing 10 bears to collect 10 bear asses at a drop rate of 10%. You're protecting a farmer's livelihood by killing the bandits that would have otherwise stole all of his cattle. You're negotiating a peace treaty between two races who've hated each other for centuries. Or you're protecting your people from the haunted burial ground that they decided to build their house on top of. All in all, I'd say that even now, in 2023, Guild Wars 2 is worth your time. The short answer here is that this isn't just a game trying to suck you into some mindless grind fest, but a fantasy world and a story to experience. I can tell you right now that even after I'm done with this first impression, whenever I've got a spare moment, I'm likely going to pick up this game again. But it looks like our Wrangler is finally back and ready to take us into the dungeon. So let's pop this Guild Wars 2 dungeon cherry and finish this first impression the right way. All right, well, it's a little dark in here, but not too bad. Sarcophaguses. Looks like this one has a burial and undead theme to it. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised with how many ghosts we've been killing. Oh, look at that. We've even got an NPC to guide us through our first dungeon. How considerate. First, we deal with a little bit of combat with some more dangerous than regular mobs, but nothing we can't handle. We find a key and all right, here we go. Big door opening. This is the moment. This is when it gets interesting. What the hell? Okay, I'm sure that error message was just a one-time thing. We'll just walk back in there and... Fuck this game. How dare they take me on this emotional roller coaster just to kick me out of the first dungeon multiple times. These bastards made me care about my character story. They went and reminded me of why I love MMORPGs in the first place. They made me have fun, goddammit. Now, as a viewer, you might not understand why I'm so mad, but I'm supposed to remain objective, soulless, and uncaring. And Guild Wars 2 just had to ruin that for me. <laughs> I spit on you, Guild Wars 2. This game is terrible. IGN, 0 out of 10. Don't play it. You know what? I'm logging out of this bullshit right now, and I'm never coming back. I am never touching this terrible, awful, unplayable mess ever again. What the hell is that? One eternity later. What year is it? As always, big thank to all my subscribers, both old and new. And a special thank to those members of Big First Impression, who this time around get to watch this video before anyone else. One of you are actually the reason I tried this game in the first place. And if you wanted some idea of how long it takes me to get around to the things you suggest, well now you know. Anyway, more content soon.